Imagine being able to drive your car all week without needing to buy any gasoline. That's becoming possible. A big car brand has made a big invention. Cars that use water to run. Experts say this could change the car industry a lot. But how does it work? And which car brand made it? And what does it mean for the future? Let's find out in this video where we explain how this water engine could change everything. Toyota is already working on a new type of engine that uses water. Yes, water! Just like the engines they use in their other cars that run on hydrogen, it is a similar one. People have been envisioning water-powered engines for a long period of time since they're really eco-friendly. However, so far, no one has been able to develop them good enough to use every day. Consequently, what's Toyota's water engine feature? On the other hand, it works just like those machines which turn water into hydrogen gas, but the difference is that this engine is not using the hydrogen that is made elsewhere. It makes its own hydrogen using water it carries on board. Through an electrolysis technique, this is achieved. Here, the water is split into hydrogen and oxygen when electricity is used. The best part? The hydrogen and the vehicle can be stored in the water tank, hence there is no need for a heavy and expensive fuel tank as is common with other hydrogen-powered vehicles. This in turn gives Toyota the opportunity to have a water engine that is lighter and more practical for daily use. It is fun to imagine the extent to which these new innovations may affect the way we perceive vehicles. Hydrogen and water engines have some similarities in how they work in the course of fueling cars. The hydrogen, which has been taken away from the oxygen, is injected into the engine, similar to the way compressed natural gas works. To achieve this, however, the engine components must be stronger because hydrogen is very dangerous when it blows up. The good part? What is more, their emissions are at least 90% less than those from conventional engines, as is the case with electric cars. And the fact that they can be refilled only with water is another advantage, which is also cost-effective. Moreover, if these engines get popular, we can end the dependence on oil. The only occasion where fossil fuels might still be irrelevant is for huge machines or power plants purposes. So we can't forget about wringing out metals from the crust of the earth for car parts, which is a very bad thing for the environment. It renders the surrounding area of mines unbearable for human inhabitation. The water engines may be compared with hydrogen combustion engines, as well as those that we call zero emissions vehicles, which are also known as FCEVs. In most cases, the water engines are more efficient than the other types. It is simple to store water, but hydrogen storage is not easy and costly. Hydrogen is a gas which can easily escape through the tank. That's why the tank should be perfect. This implies that tanks for hydrogen need to be taken care of specially and the expense of maintaining them being high. However, the storing of hydrogen outside the car is also a challenge and a costly one, as it has to be maintained under the right conditions and in special containers. It can be bought at a store or even if you know how to, you can make it at home. Hydrogen is the most expensive element to get pure and we have already mentioned that the problems with hydrogen make it not too popular. They're generally more expensive in purchases and maintenance than electric and fossil cars, thereby making one ask why anyone would choose them. However, water engines as a concept look great. Are they feasible for day-to-day -day use? Yes, they are. They have good performance, as strong as the regular gasoline engines, and can be made even stronger. They're safer because they do not keep highly combustible fuels, so you don't need to worry about the occurrence of an accident. Water engines are a simple thing to manufacture, and as far as the mechanical designs go, they are more complex than the regular gasoline engines. They are the easiest and cheapest to make, and thus suitable for countries with fewer natural resources and fossil fuels. A Persian scientist, Ali Kazemi, was able to convert his Peugeot 405 to run on water, which demonstrated the possibility of using this technology as a sustainable alternative. The success of Kazemi draws attention to the power of water-driven engines, and if companies like Toyota would be the investor in them, there is a high possibility that the water-driven engines would be the future fuel of automobiles. From the economic standpoint, they surpass gas-powered automobiles and electric vehicles. The car converted by Kazemi was able to travel up to 96 kilometers on one gallon of water, and this was better than it had been with its original petrol engine. The fact that water-powered engines can reportedly go over 80 miles per gallon without losing power hints at a drastic decrease in running costs that would be otherwise impossible to achieve. 
water engines, maybe the future vehicles, but now there are some problems that need to be solved. At this moment, these engines have not yet been mainstreamed, and no other car manufacturers are advancing them. That makes us wonder, are water engines the real future alternative or not? Well, it is not as easy as that, you know? Water engines and their previous repetitions have had issues. The first issue that comes to mind is stability. A lot of prototypes that have been built don't work properly and they're not very practical and therefore, they're not usable in daily life. Firstly, there is the safety factor. Splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen is associated with water being used as fuel. This way, we feel scared of using these cars. Hydrogen is a safety nightmare as a simple leak can be extremely hazardous. However, even if Toyota made the safest car you could ever imagine which runs on water, other big guys such as lithium miners, battery makers and of course oil companies will do their best to stop Toyota. Through the use of water as fuel, the extent of fossil fuel usage in rare elements like cobalt and lithium will be greatly reduced. This will possibly be one of the most powerful disruptions in the industry that could bring down the world's most profitable companies like Rio Tinto. In other words, these companies would be going all out to prevent the progress of such engines. Don't believe it? There are rumors they achieved that about 25 years ago with the first fully working water-powered car. Stanley Allen Mayer, the inventor of the car, claimed he was constantly in danger and received threats from people likely connected to oil companies threatened by his water engine. He even said he was offered millions to destroy his car and plans and never speak of them again. Nevertheless, Mayer endured this pressure and even dared to compete with big oil firms. Once, when he was dining with two Belgian businessmen who were very interested in his invention, Mayer all of a sudden felt a lump in his throat and dropped the fork. His brother, who was also with him, in turn followed. Then his brother later said that he told him that one of the businessmen had given him poison, and that is what killed him. The official cause of death is a ruptured brain aneurysm, according to the records. Yet, there still remains controversy on the events that led to his death. A few days after his death, his car was stolen from the garage together with the plans of his engine. It has never been recovered since. This raises the question of why Toyota is trying to develop this engine when it already has a more reliable and efficient variant. They could be developing it, however, such activities are usually classified and therefore, the lack of public confirmation may be the reason.